the next topic. <laughs> yes. I think this is Andrew's territory. Yep, it's definitely <laughs> Andrew's territory. <laughs> okay, topic two after an hour and a half um, is the Barbarettes and their uh, mi- mini album that came out last year called Winter. So, um, Umu, did you know? Do you know who the Barbarettes are? Because I'm going to do a yes. react to the case. Okay, oh. well for the audience, then I'll do a react to the case style like intro sort of. Background. Yeah, so, the Barbarettes are a retro duop inspired uh, trio. Well, now a duo, sadly. Um, uh, they were inspired by the barbershop quartets from the fifties and sixties, and they uh, the catalyst for what made them want to do uh, like music or just go into the music industry was they found this old Korean. Uh, I don't know, just like sort of a yeah, like fifties group called the Kim Sisters. Uh, they they're all from Korea, and they were one of the first few uh, Korean acts to break into America. Like, they were on, like, Ed Sullivan, like, multiple times and everything. So they sort of just, like, wanted to model themselves after that sound. So yeah, just a lot of, like, really throwback style, like, uh, doo-wop, definitely. Like, they're, the, 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 they started off doing, like, covers of, like, Mr. Sandman or just, like, songs like that. Just, like, really, like, old-school um, stuff. So you definitely... If you if you're not familiar with it, you should uh, with them. Uh, that's sort of just like the overall basic um, idea behind uh, the Barbarettes. So they every year they've just, over for the past like two or three years they've done a uh, winter or uh, Christmas album, and this is the one from 2017. Uh, so this is part of our K-pop auto reverse uh, sort of series where we basically just do like retro throwback reviews. So yeah, let's get into it. So the first track is called. White blanket featuring, oh god, Gilgu Bongu. I think it's like I think it's GB Nine. Yep. Yeah, the the like their proper name is. So I'll go first, and then Umu, you go second, and then just like we'll follow from there. Um, okay. I mean, just pretty much me. This entire like review is just gonna be me, be me gushing about like how much I love the Barbarettes, <laughs> their harmonies <laughs> and their vocals and everything. Like that's just gonna be a, that's just gonna be a constant. Um, so, uh, this song starts off very just, like, slow and very just, like, minimum the instrumentation. It's just, like, mostly just vocals. And then it really starts to come in with, like, the, like, I can definitely tell it's, like, a standing, like, it's, like, standing bass and, like, hi-hat and, like, there's snare clicks and there's, like, all this, like, sleigh bells and everything. They definitely do a good job of building the sort of Christmas atmosphere. Um... There's a really good balance of uh, both male and female vocals between uh, the Barbarettes and GB9. Um, Definitely helps fill out that dynamic range or or just like all of the vocal ranges that they have. Um, And obviously, the thing I really appreciate just in terms of like the entire album is that uh, just it does a really good job of evoking the evoking the emotions they want out of a Christmas album because Christmas you think. Pretty much everyone's a kid on Christmas. Like, I don't know if you guys are celebrate or not, but, like, pretty much you're like, oh, my God, I want presents. Like, I'm still like that, and I'm freaking 25 or whatever. You're just, like, still super excited when Christmas comes around. So a lot of the music tends to be very childlike and joyous and just very upbeat in that sort of way. So, like, I really do appreciate that aspect that they bring to this uh, Christmas music. And um, for anyone that actually hasn't listened to... uh, or wishes to listen to this, you can actually find it on like Spotify. I believe it's on like iTunes. Probably find it on YouTube if you wanted to listen along. Um, and just to close out, like that, the outro I just really love. I'm a, such a sucker for just like slowing it down, just like help building the ending. And uh, it's just, it's perfect. It's perfect to me. And I mean, like, I'm a really big connoisseur of Christmas songs, and this is one of my favorites easily. <laughs> So, ooh, I, I'm okay. really interested to hear what your thoughts are on this. I have two whole pages of notes on this song. I, I got most excited <laughs> for this one. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I, I went hardcore. So, yeah. Basically, my overall thoughts of this album is just who can say no to jazzy harmonies and piano? Yeah. You'd be crazy to say, say no. no to this. How? Like, especially since there's no autotune. There's literally no autotune. Everything's so natural. Like, maybe mm. once I heard added reverb towards the end of the note. The rest is completely natural. And even at times, you can hear their lips smacking and their breath. And, you know, just everything <laughs> happening. So it sounds very real and very down to earth. And that's what you want with Christmas music. Now, okay, so what I love about the song is that 
I feel like with Christmas ballads, you need robot, r- rubato. And rubato means just freedom of time. You aren't mm. in this, you know, you don't have to move to a certain beat, but you can, you know, just flow how you want to. And they have a lot of that at the beginning. Yeah. And then just one small complaint. So they start it off and they have like, they flow along with whatever time they want. And then they have this little transition where they end one phrase and go into like, uh, sleigh bell little part and they do string rubato and string rubato is the um, when strings play and this one part i wish they just drew that out a bit longer in the track it lasts for four beats or less and it's just at the same dynamic it's just you know it's just immediate transition i feel like they could have made it more dramatic if they maybe Especially when like the almost the entire rest of the song. Yeah, they were building up this, like the intro and the outro. They're definitely doing a lot of that building up. So that probably, yeah, that definitely would have improved the song. Exactly. So I was like, oh, that's just one complaint. So next thing I said that, yeah, there's obviously no autotune because some of the harmonies were a little pitchy, but actually most of it is really, really good. So you can tell how comfortable they are singing together. Like, I'm curious whether they sang in different rooms or they all surrounded a, a mic with um, a mic and just sang at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. I loved the change of texture to just the piano about halfway through the song like the song was flowing in a certain way and at the perfect moment and knew when to change and that actually happened a lot with these songs um the whole album and then i this song was i is it supposed to be comedic because i didn't have the lyrics and halfway through like there's baby laughter like little kid laughter and yep. then they pitch down yeah the there's voices like a lot of like, 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 like that <laughs> Yeah, I was really confused. I was like, "Is is this this must be funny or something?" They're talking about like maybe kids messing up Christmas or something. I, I don't know. Um, then... I believe before that part with the baby laughter, she's like, uh-huh. gata yo, which is like yes. like a baby, like a baby. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I mean it's like a baby. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, right. It's one of the parts um, I actually understand in the song. <laughs> yeah. Something that I notice a lot in all Christmas music is that like constant eighth notes in the piano whether it's a chord or a single or like octaves um plus a jazzy bluesy line over it equals christmas like yep (laughs) yeah that's that's the formula (laughs) yep exactly um cute quotes at the end (laughs) i don't i i don't that's what I wrote. Cute quote at the end. I guess there's a cute quote at the end. Yeah. Okay. Merry that's Christmas. that's my thought. That's, I don't know. that's the only quote. <laughs> and happy oh, New oh, Year. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, didn't it? Didn't go to Jingle Bells? It was like da 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 da. Or it, do, it was do, some. Do, do, yeah. yeah. At the end, it quoted some. Yeah, they uh, they harmon they harm, like they, they they sort of do 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 like that. They they go that's a, that's a that's a recurring thing. They don't actually do Jingle Bells in this entire album, but there's a couple songs where they sort of like incorporate Jingle. But <laughs> yeah. the first few notes and then move on. Yeah, like the first few notes of Jingle mm-hmm. Bells into it. So mm-hmm. yeah. All right, okay. so my turn now. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Um. I, f- I feel like again they they're they're definitely going into a very like classic vibe like it's just very quintessential uh <laughs> we're going on a journey with them <laughs> I just want chocolate and, uh, okay <laughs> you talking don't mind me okay anyways um but yeah like what Uma was saying before with the uh um like omnidirectional uh, microphone like that was one of my favorite parts is like it it feels like um we're kind of just, uh, I'm sitting like in a room or in like a, a cafe or something like that. And the three of them are right in front of me. Yeah, I it's love, like, I love when they do that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's, it like, doesn't feel of, like, it doesn't feel like an actual, like, Oh, it's a song. It feels like they're singing. Like, yeah, it feels like, Oh, it's yeah. just a carol that you're singing around like a, in front of the fire or whatever. And like inside your, like inside your house or whatever. It, yeah, it's yeah. got that casual nature to it. Yeah. That's, that's one of my favorite things in music is, uh, when they play with the sound space and stuff like that. So, yeah, that's definitely my favorite part of the song. Also, harmonizing, amazing as always, to be expected from the Barbarettes. Mm-hmm. Nate? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not a huge fan of Christmas music, so I'm not going to have How too much to say you? about... 
<laughs> like, I don't hate Christmas music, but it's just not something I really go out of my way to listen to. Um, even during Christmas? Winter is and coming, like, Nate. Winter is coming. Huh? Yeah, even, I, even during Christmas, so it's like, this if is it's Christmas. on, I'll listen to it, but, like, I don't hate it. This actually um, comes out on Christmas Day. I'm not going to play it like, myself. This topic comes oh, really? out on Christmas Day, so, Merry Christmas, Maybe. everyone. That works. Oh, um, no, Merry yeah, Christmas. Yeah, that's true. That's right. Um... But yeah, I thought I thought the song was good. I I really like the mix of um, the solo singing and the harmonies that they do. Like they they do a good mixture of like showcasing each member individually and then also having their signature barbershop quartet type harmonies and stuff. Um, so yeah, I liked it. All right, so the next song is oh uh, god. Uh, it's okay, where? you can cry. Yeah, it's okay, you can <laughs> Santa cry. Is coming to t- yeah, because it's <laughs> yeah, just like, like it's like a super long title. Like, yeah. I think the Korean is "It's okay, you They're can cry." Yeah, yeah, it's okay, you can cry. Santa Claus is but coming then, to town. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So, just from the uh, like the the outset of this song again, just like their the unique vocalizations that they always add to their songs are just so unique. The B A R B I double T S. Like they're just they always say they always say the barber like their name, the Barbarettes. Like I'm pretty sure they did it one of their songs is they they did a, a reimagining of Barbaran instead of Ba 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 Barbaran. They did Ba 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 Barbarettes. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. So I always love that detail in their um in their music. So um, I think like as very obvious that comes through this song is the switching between Korean and English, so that definitely helps sort of uh, make it unique. Um, and obviously it makes it sort of unique, especially for us considering we're American speakers. So it's not it's something different. It's not the same sort of uh, carol that we've heard over and over. Um, again, sort of I'm I'm just gonna obsess about like rim clicks the entire night just like the the sort of galloping effect that it helps add just like reindeer sort of thing um again walking bass line just fits the song so well um just like all the times like like during the the refrain where they slow down like do 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 like they help build it up again again just very like jazzy where just like every like Time signature is, is or tempo is just like comes secondary to help ba- um, building up that emotion and like that spacing helps. Um, that spacing definitely helps build up the emotion is when they when they finally get to like the the climax of that. So just uh, right. again, there's just so much intricacy to it. And I, I know it's it, we're, we're, pro- we're over analyzing freaking Christmas music, but the way the Barbarettes do it, it's just like it's no one no one does this basically. It's incredible. Right. Oh, Umu. My turn? Okay. Oh, no. So, yeah, the, <laughs> I, just, I think it starts off with, like, the really fast piano, right? So, immediately what came to mind was Mariah Carey's... Uh, I don't want a lot for Christmas. Da, 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 that. All I <laughs> want <laughs> for Christmas <laughs> is you. Yeah. yeah, that immediately came to mind because I, it might have been the same notes. I don't know, but anyways, it's the... Da, 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 da thing that starts and then yeah the next thing that popped into my mind when i was listening to this i was like stand up bass yes i was so excited to hear <laughs> um you know just acoustic stand up bass instead of like maybe an electric yeah bass. Oh, I, um, I, I wish i learned i wish i learned how to play it like we had one at our band mm-hmm. room but it was always broken and then i never got a chance and no i'm lefty so i i have to <laughs> i just it just be an entire ordeal to like flip it around but like i'm just like just like one day one day i'm just gonna be like i'm gonna buy a stand-up bass and find some room for it in my house and just start learning because it's pretty much the same do it. except there's just no frets yeah <laughs> Yeah, and much <laughs> bigger. You have to reach further. Yeah. <laughs> a yeah. longer neck. <laughs> um, and then, yeah. yeah, so I love how this song started off with you don't know it's about to be an arrangement of an already existing song. And so when, I mean, I didn't read the whole title. All I read was It's Okay, You Can Cry. So I thought it was going to be original song. But then when, um, was it Santa's Coming to Town, whatever the name of the song is, um, pops up, I was like, oh, is this going to be a medley? But then, you know, the... The repeated melody kept going over and over and I was like oh this is an arrangement and I do think they put lots of thought into it because lately I just don't I'm sorry this is coming out on Christmas but I just don't care about Christmas it's a lot of stress and a lot of pressure for me to like <laughs> yeah, get no, the it is very stressful. presents 
<laughs> get the perfect presents for my family and also like it's so much work putting up a tree and so much work putting up lights and it's for such a small like, short amount of time and I could go the, on and on but I really don't want to ruin your Christmas cheer <laughs> no, the, the lead up to Christmas is like complete nonsense the actual like the actual Christmas day is definitely the most enjoyable part. Just like, yeah, I've been, I still need to go. I, I'm not done Christmas shopping. Like, not even joking. It's like yeah. four days away. And I need to buy gifts. And I'm just like, oh. Yeah, that, 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 exactly. that part I don't like. like wait. Now that I'm older, I know exactly what my parents are going to get me because they know what I like, they know what I need. And it tends to be socks. Yes, socks, socks are the best Christmas <laughs> present ever. <laughs> Yo! As you get older. Yo, like, seriously. I, I, was, like, I was like, I so hate crazy. socks. It was like, no, I need more but socks. No, it sucks. Yeah, I, I honestly run out all the time. Especially oh my at college. Because <laughs> yeah. it's just like, I don't want to do laundry. Just like, just... Oh my god. Yeah. But anyway, so I was trying to talk about um, how what does make me feel like it is Christmas and me actually enjoy the time is the Christmas music that I grew up listening to. And the reason why I'm talking about that is because I feel like um, there's like specific recordings that I'm attached to and I don't like any other yeah. recordings, right? Yeah, like definitely. I'm sentimentally attached to that specific one. But listening mm -hmm. to them, I felt like they brought a warmth to it and their own unique to uniqueness to this song. Whereas if I was raised listening to this, it would, it would just be as, you know, big as like this, a, a different standard. So I thought they, I just thought their take on this was absolutely very smart. And um, I, it, it felt, their take on this song felt like a, big band take but minus the brass because <laughs> we had the stand up <laughs> bass we had percussion that would play beneath like you know the shouting trumpets and saxes and we had the did we have a funky guitar i can't remember but we also had the ju blue bluesy i was gonna say juicy jazzy bluesy piano yeah so i felt like wow this this is this could definitely, the brass players probably cost a lot more than string players in Korea to play for on a label. Um, uh, oh, and I found it interesting that they chose to have a marimba. I believe it's a marimba. I can't always tell the sound between um, wood and uh, metal things that the percussionists hit. I think it's a marimba. Yeah, because sometimes it's... Bells. Sometimes yeah. it's like, sometimes, oh, you might be like xylophone or whatever. Just like they did like yeah. kind of like... Yeah, it's similar, but yeah, I can't tell either. But there's there's another song that actually I believe has xylophone. So yeah, yeah, I <laughs> think they yeah in this album they use the they actually they used um, the marimba once or twice in it. So I thought it was an yeah, interesting was, choice to go with marimba because another yeah. not trope but uh, I guess a sound that Christmas music uses a lot are jingly things. So sleigh bells. Uh, normal bells, percussion instruments like, you know, xylophones um, and marimbas and all the other ones. So I was like, okay, I guess the reason why they chose to use a marimba is because they're trying to use the high pitch sound and incorporate that into this song. And then, of course, there's, <laughs> I was connecting this to the first song of the album. There's, there's more rubato in this song and there's also more giggling babies. So, um... <laughs> Um, they must love oh, yeah, the giggling the, babies button on like some random keyboard. <laughs> true. I mean, giggling babies means happiness, right? And fertility. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the one last thing that I was uh, noticing the song is that they would, this song, I think more than others, they would sing in unison in the same exact octave. And so it wasn't as thick as a texture, and I almost preferred that they sang even more in harmonies throughout and not go to that mm. unison, but I can see why. I think the reason why they went into unison is because it would emphasize the fact when they do go into a jazzy chord, you know, it hits us in the face, hits us in the head, I don't know, hits us in the ears and is more obvious. So like when, when they, you know, when they do spread out into a thicker texture, it you know adds variation or something so i could see why they would sing a lot in unison but it's just me being picky and always wanting thick texture and harmonies <laughs> jacob but for me okay. i don't have a ton to say it's the same you know christmas christmas carol we know and love um i love that they uh you know gave it uh korean lyrics if those didn't exist already but i bet they did and uh yeah, great Barbara's vocals. I, it's it's hard to describe for me, I guess. Just cr Christmas music is hard to describe for me. 
Yep. So I don't have a yeah, ton of context, the, I guess. I'm in, I'm in the same boat. Um, I do like the like little unique part that they have in the middle of the song. Um, I wish there was a little bit more like original parts to it. Um, instead of it mostly just being the song that everyone knows. Um, but yeah, it's good. So it's gonna be one of those kind of shows, huh? Where it's just like, oh my 100%. god, it's amazing! And you're like, is is it's Christmas music gonna need to be a new it's Christmas music? <laughs> it's Christmas music as a new. That's catchphrase. basically, yeah, it's basically it. It's Christmas music. All right, next up we have a a proper medley between uh, the first Noel and Ho- Oh Holy Night. So. Um, I just think it's cool to pair these songs together as um, sort of a medley, just um, keeping them as one. Uh, so starting off with First Noel, uh, harmonization obviously is incredible. Almost the entire song is an acapella. I love how um, some parts of it are almost like a round where it's like, no, well, and then the other person's like, no, well, like I, I'm just, I'm just a sucker for all these like really traditional like elements. Um, and it, again, it, despite this being like, songs that are like hundreds of years old or whatever it still fits in the context of Barbarette's concept that they are a like retro doo-wop group that they they sort of um, managed to uh, apply that sound uh, to these traditional hymns in that sort of way uh, as for uh, Oh Holy Night which is probably like which blew me away and just like I still feel really emotional when I hear it um, is because because basically um, to sort of just do an analysis of it is uh, like the instrumental is very min- minimal in this and basically it, it's almost like it's like these bells that kind of remind me of like you know those things that you hang above a baby's crib and then you spin it and it like makes like sort of like music yeah. box noise or whatever mm-hmm. so that's what the instrumental sounds like and it fits very yeah. well thematically it's like okay Christmas baby Jesus you're t- trying to be very childlike in that sort of nature so Okay, okay, I'm probably Better going Jesus. way too deep into. <laughs> yeah, so it's yeah, it definitely fits in the sort of theme of Christmas and it, um, in that sort of way. And I mean, just these songs actually, again, we're just listening to like they didn't do anything original with it necessarily in terms of just the arrangement. But I still these still hold a really like uh, important place in my heart just because I, I obviously grew up to listen to these songs. Like I remember like specifically like when I was a kid, I'd be like a scaredy cat or just like I couldn't sleep or whatever. So like my mom would come and sing me like these Christmas carols and like Oh Holy Night and like Silent Night or whatever. So it just, it has that sentimental attachment um, oh, or yeah, sentimental yeah, yeah. value to it. So yeah, I, I really enjoy this type of music. So that's probably why, just because my mom would sing me Christmas songs just to help me fall asleep when I was a kid. Yeah, oh my goodness. I love how it starts off in acapella. I mean, basically throughout, if not for the music box, I guess would it be played on a synth, maybe? But it sound it sounded so acoustic. It was a really great sound. Um, but I love the beginning where uh, one of the vocalists held out tonic and then one of them had like an ascending line above tonic and one of them had a descending line. And so it was almost polyphonic in that way. And then, Mm -hmm. of course, they move on to one melody with a lower harmony. And then the next phrase, the melody continues with the same member. And then the other member switches to upper harmonies. So, like, right now we're covering all bases, which is freaking awesome. And then they, like, the harmonies switches between thirds, fourths, fifths, and octaves. So we're constantly, like, it doesn't, it isn't parallel harmonies. We aren't singing, you know exactly like this it's more like yeah right <laughs> it's like that yeah yeah, yeah. Just, that's the thing know, that's what as, makes it more it's yeah yeah it's way more interesting than string singing it as a straight up harmony just because i feel like yeah that's that's how that's pretty much that comes that's bog standard for when it comes to anything christmas music but yeah just mm-hmm. that sort of aspect that they add to it is just makes it so much more intricate yes exactly and so because it's stuck around these moving harmonies and simple textures i just felt that this was very beautiful and right to the point and um i love there were there were key since this was a medley and we were trying to include different songs there were several key changes that they did throw in there and so i'd be i'd be like i'd get into the mood and i'd feel really comfortable and then it would like sidestep into it and i'd be like what <laughs> <You're making laughs> what <up. laughs> we want somewhere no that's why i like can't i i have like a 
it's called a sleepy time playlist on my phone that I have to listen to <laughs> because yeah. I have insomnia and so I can't I have to calm myself down Same. and I had to remove all the songs with modulations on it or like with any interesting chords whatsoever otherwise I can't fall asleep because my brain is just like must analyze <laughs> what's happening <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> anyways yeah I thought it was a beautiful key change to transition to old holy night and love the music box sound uh, I, isn't Holy Night taken at a slower tempo usually? Was this fast? Yeah, this is like this, this is definitely a bit more sped up because I, I mean most hymns are just very slow and just sort of like uh, in that sort of way. But yeah, this is definitely a bit faster than what I'm used to hearing. But I mean, despite that, I, it didn't bother me necessarily just because again, I think it it still fit. Uh, I guess they just wanted to to match uh, First Noel yeah. better as opposed to just yeah. like slowing it down way too much. It it work it works better in in the context of a medley. Exactly, and then just the last thing that I put was OMG the ending secondary. It like you feel like it does do a step and starts prolonging a different key, so you feel like it's gonna modulate, but it's actually the ending. So I was like, whoa, we just ended in a totally new harmonic space. What just happened? Uh, I wrote down uh, lots of uh, lots of lots of A's. But yeah, so I, th I thought that was it was just a really cool take on it. And they added their own flair to it. So 10 out of 10. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so I thought their uh, their vocal performance in this song particularly was really really good. Um, I liked how like stripped back the instrumental was throughout the for most of the song. It made it feel very like I guess naked and vulnerable, which I feel like is really helps for like I guess the coziness of the like uh, Christmas type songs mm -hmm. and uh, and stuffy. Anyways, the. Uh, <laughs> The uh, the way they uh, meshed together, I thought worked really well. So, yeah, I uh, I think this is probably my favorite on the album is uh, this cover here. Same, same actually. <laughs> hmm. Um. Yeah, I really like the use of the marimbas. Like when we talked about, they use a couple times in the album. Um. I especially liked it in this song. Um. And I, I think like the one th thing I wish this song did more was mix the two songs. Um, where it was more mostly like until the end, it was just like they did the first Noel and then they did Oh Holy Night. At the very end, they like merged them a bit. Um, but I wish it was more mashup y throughout the whole song. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, yeah, overall, it was good. And I think songs like these are just like exactly the type of thing that you need to show people if you're about to be, or it showcases like the amount of vocal talent that the Barbarettes have in that basically they didn't they don't really need much instrumentation to carry it necessarily just because like they they are the instruments essentially they they, hey, yeah, they are yeah. they they're able to carry songs just on their own just doing everything a cappella essentially uh, mm -hmm. next up we have an original track called my winter wonderland and uh, again this building up that childlike atmosphere with the uh the xylophone just sort of again just very minimalist in that sort of way it's just that one instrument and then the vocals and then it builds up with the, like the violin or uh, this like string orchestra and then like the pianos and it's the song's just beautiful it's so beautiful and it, you know this is another song that just almost that makes me almost cry at times just because Aww. like i feel the emotion in it and everything mm -hmm. just like that's that's pretty much barbara's in a nutshell just like they're, they're their music's <laughs> they so beautiful it just makes you cry yeah it, and you know, again they're just like a and I think the the thing that really uh, contributes to that is all of them have different vocal f uh, ranges and flavors Cameras. or whatever. So obviously, yeah, they, yeah the, the textures, the, yeah, the, the the difference in the the timbre of their voices definitely adds to uh, that element of it. So Umu, I know you're moving, but do you have your, you can, can you look at your notes and walk at the same time? <laughs> oh right, my notes. Ah! <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I'm going back and why then I'll get water. <laughs> why does the frame rate improve when she's walking around and when she's yeah. <laughs> My 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 it's computer's okay. like, wait, oh shit, gotta catch up, gotta speed up. Okay. This is my winter wonderland. <laughs> gotta go fast. Yeah, so I said Marimba plus high voice heart. And then um I thought it was really cool how it began where the Marimba's progression 
moved when the vocals did. So like the vocals would take a break, so would the progression. And it just flowed that way. And then of course we had a beautiful cello. And I just want to thank the Barbarettes, even though like they haven't made it big, they still spent so much money to get musicians, like real musicians, and acoustic yeah, everything the on this album. Oh, thank you. That's the one thing I feel bad about is just like, or the one, the one, like one big reason I wanted to cover this is because there's a lot of people that don't know the Barbarettes and they put so much into it just from like adding their own flavor to the song, at like paying for these, all these expensive, like actual instruments. And I'm just like, people need to appreciate, they're honestly one of the most underrated, like un- underrated groups, like mm. in all of music, just because I feel like yeah, more people need to like hear the beauty that of or yeah. the beauty that they bring to all this music so that's why I wanted to do this topic ultimately just because I know attaching you to Thank this you. it's like oh my god everyone's gonna look up the Barbarettes now <laughs> <laughs> oh I mean yeah it's their sound is so beautiful and so unique and needed I'm just glad that they exist and um, going back mm-hmm. to my Winter Wonderland when I was listening to the melody it's it sticks in a minor key and I kept wanting or like I kept expecting to hear a Picardy third but we never did. We never heard any major moment in the melody. And so I was like, actually, I'm glad that it stuck to its key because major in minor songs have kind of become a trope, or at least in Kevin's opinion, I I still don't mind it. (laughs) Yeah, and like when, so we stayed in the minor key, but then once we reached the bridge, I. We either modulated or we just had a bunch of secondary dominants, but basically we got a little harmonically adventurous. And there was like this cool, one of the vocalists did this mini vocal riff and I was like, damn girl, whoa, that's amazing. And then um, it ends kind of how it begins where the piano plays the exact same thing that the marimba did. And I was like, oh, this cute little palindrome. Yeah, Yeah. just, yeah. They do that a lot in their songs, just like like the palindrome sort of thing, just yeah, it, it definitely helps sort of thing make things come full circle in that sort of way. Uh, Jacob, your thoughts? Yes. So with uh, Winter Wonderland, I, I actually really enjoyed this song as well. It's very chill and, uh, I guess, low energy, um, but not in a bad way. I, I think that's really its strength. It is, it's so, like, chill and low energy, and this is something you could easily, p- like, put on um, at, like, a Christmas party, and nobody would... I mean, it's Christmas music, so it's, it's fine. But it I go mean, on like, a sleepy time general, playlist, like, right? <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> but, but yeah, like um, I think that's definitely a strong point, and they definitely know how to keep their voice nice and you know gentle and um, yeah, just it's a good song. Check it out. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is why um, I get water before I go on shows because they, you're gonna be like, "Oh, yeah, we've been going so I long." I was doing things until I'm we almost, called. I didn't. I'm have almost time. through like a 24 ounce giant water bottle. <laughs> like, I'm halfway through this. I don't have anything. I've been <laughs> suffering. Right, um, mate. But uh, for me, this is actually my favorite song. Um, I just like how soft it is with the piano and just some strings. Like, I mean, it's. It's a Christmassy ballad, um, <laughs> but that's not a bad thing. Um, yeah, I thought it was definitely my favorite. All right, and to round out the review, we have the ending track called All I Want Is You. Uh, this song is its like an ukulele, just like acoustic type track, um, and I'm a huge sucker for anything that uses ukulele. Uh that's probably the Filipino in me, <laughs> just or just because it was a really big thing. Like you know how like you know when you're growing up in like I don't know just like high school or whatever, and then like every guy's oh. just gonna be like, I'm gonna learn the guitar so oh, that I can yeah, serenade yeah, yeah, all yeah. the women's. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like with like the people I grew up with, it was it was ukulele. If you learned ukulele, you could like serenade all the women's, and then they, I don't know. I never learned it, but <laughs> um, I I do really appreciate the, this just because it also just it's like basically like a it's like a Hawaiian vibe Christmas song or whatever so or just like a Hawaiian vibe winter song so they, they, the contrast in that and where most Christmas songs definitely make you think of the cold and, win- and winter and that sort of thing where this is very much more relaxing and definitely uh, gives you that um, Hawaiian vibe to it uh, again just the again incorporating that sort of like Hawaiian vibe with the doo vocals just again perfect pairing together and the thing I love at the very end is just I love like behind the scenes like or just like 
uh, random nonsense or just like ah like towards the end. It's I love those. I love yeah. when people leave those things in. It's so adorable. So it was a great way to end this entire album. It was incredible. Oh yeah, especially since like since it was such a thin texture. Sorry, I pronounce it ukulele, but I'll call it ukulele. Um, so with the ukulele, it's such a light, small, small, small sound. So this track was so much of their voices. So I felt like it was a fantastic thing because it really promoted their brand, which is exactly <laughs> what you said at the beginning of this um, section to introduce them. And yeah, I I called it tropical, but like, yeah, I meant Hawaiian um, beach vibes, uh, vocals creating chords, almost um, almost chords because there's only well, I guess triads, yeah, uh, creating yeah vocals creating <laughs> triads. So they're all the har- most of the harmonic content. Um, also, I loved the groove change, the rhythm change in the ukulele um, halfway through, having exactly when it needed to. Um, and all I want is you hook. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That was that was one small, one more small complaint was all I want is you hook repeats a lot, especially towards the end. Mm-hmm. And I feel like. They, it was right when they sing all I want is you it's together and it's in harmony but I feel like they could have varied it more if they just reharmonized it a bit or changed the voices instead of just repeating it as mm-hmm. is um, and it wouldn't be too much of a change but it would be a small change for those who are listening yeah it. yeah but yeah like I said fantastic end to the album Jacob your turn Jacob alright uh, yeah this is what your turn hi I thought she said raise your hand Jacob I was like okay oh no no I said your turn Jacob (laughs) oh (laughs) anyways uh, all I want is you this one uh, also is one of my favorites I'd say it's between this and first Noel Holy Night um this one definitely gives off the most like old timey like 40s 50s vibe which Mm -hmm. I like a lot and I think that has to do with the all I want is you part being Mm -hmm. like completely in unison which Mm -hmm. I guess is a thing they did a lot back then like when I listen to this, all I imagine is like gameplay of like freaking Cuphead with like Christmas <laughs> everything or something like. But yeah, um, yeah, I enjoyed this quite a lot. Like, or I could see like there being like I'm playing Fallout and it's playing on the on the radio or something. Yeah, yeah. It's just anything '50s vibe basically. Hmm. Is uh, this is what uh, I guess that takes me back to. Even though I wasn't alive in the 50s, but... Yeah, you again, it's I just mean. your nostalgic... Well, again, we grew up with a lot of this music, despite us not being around yeah. in the time period, so we develop a, le- a level of nostalgia for it, even though, again, it's just mm. before our time still. So, yeah, I definitely have a lot of nostalgia when it comes to this type of music. So, Nate, take us out. Yeah, it was interesting to hear this show up, because it's not really a Christmas song at all, um, and, like, it wasn't what I was expecting from the rest of the album. But, um, yeah, I thought it was cool to hear... Just this like ukulele focused Barbarette song. Um, I mean, it's it's right in their wheelhouse. It's what we we've heard from them before. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I thought it was an interesting way to close out the album, um, but not necessarily a bad thing. All right, so uh, we don't do real review scores when it comes to uh, K-pop Auto Reverse because these are. These albums are just immaculate, and there'd be no point in scoring it, at least on our end. I know you guys, pro- I know uh, Nate and Jacob, you probably wouldn't give it his highest score, but... Well, I, I still know. like it. It's weird I recommend st- yeah, it. Yeah, I like it. So just, uh, like, final thoughts yeah. overall. I mean, I'd have to say, like, as as a huge fan of just Christmas music, as a Christmas music connoisseur, that's <laughs> what I'll call oh, okay. myself. Um, again, like, just... What this brings to the table in terms of Christmas music is, I guess, game changing in a sort of way. Just um, basically, like I, when it comes to Christmas music, I just listen to the Barbarettes Christmas music whenever. Like last year, basically, <laughs> all I did was listen to like they have a bunch of Christmas albums, and like it just I love their Christmas stuff probably the best, just because I feel like they're able to nail down like the feeling of Christmas like so so well, and uh, and. I, I really I really hope that more people listen to them and I really hope that more people appreciate just how unique they are just in music in general and I really hope that I hope they don't keep hemorrhaging members I'm so scared that like oh they want all, all these acoustic I'll instruments say, yeah. and expensive stuff I don't want them to end up as like one person eventually so please just like I usually don't like being a sellout or like a 
telling you like what to spend your money on, but like please support the Barbarettes because I want them to be around mm. and make music. Christmas music. Yes, buy their music or just listen to them or just tweet at them and be like, we love your music or whatever. Just, I want them to know that they like. There's people that outside are outside of Korea that love their music. So, do they speak English? Uh, yeah, I think one of them. No, one, one of them might be sure. half American because her last name is just well, sounds pretty American. So, uh, Uma, what are your final thoughts? Reach out to them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, my, <laughs> I basically yeah, use your like influence. you. you you said everything that I wanted to say because their vocals really, really do stand out. Their vocals and their style of music that they're staying so strongly to that they like haven't deviated from. It's just such a fresh thing to hear in the Korean industry. And I mean, now that my channel is growing bigger, I find this as an opportunity to promote um, the groups that aren't as popular and that I really, really respect. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, yes, this is a brilliant group and I would love to keep hearing music from them constantly. So I just, I'll do the best I can and just buy their music and encourage everyone else to buy it too. Mm -hmm. High five. High five. <laughs> Jacob, last thoughts? Uh, yeah, so I think this is a really, really solid uh, Christmas album and it deserves to be heard. Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> Nate, what Jacob said. <laughs> Enough said. Man. Enough said indeed. God, why is it? When it, why am I the only one that's super enjoying or super positive when it comes to Christmas music? Because like, when I we just were, don't listen uh, to Christmas. Not, music. No, because I'm not we're, negative. I just don't listen to it. Yeah. No, when Christmas we're, comes around, all I'm doing is screaming uh, "Diamond" by SNSD on repeat. No. Like, yeah. <laughs> Why is K-pop anyone doing Christmas any song? different? No, exactly. I mean, no, because like even when we reviewed Taeyeon's <laughs> Christmas all, album, all, which is the best Taeyeon album, you guys say. were like, eh. No, it's because it's, it's not my voice. Clearly, it's not, not my voice. My voice. So yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed this topic. Again, it's not something you really hear out of like K-pop uh, YouTubers, but. Yeah. Yeah, I really, I just, I can't encourage everyone enough to just go look them up, go listen to their music, even if it's not the Christmas music, because all of their entire catalog is just incredible. And if if there's ever a chance that they, they hear this or come across this, I love all of you, all of the members, even the ones that left already. And keep continuing to do what you're doing, because it's, ugh, it makes me so happy. It, it's like, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. So on that note, that's the end of that review. <laughs> <laughs> it's don't like, lie you were into it yeah it was, it's, like, into, it's like it's like blade runner bdsm oiled concept up, chained up uh wano shirtless like literally like the only thing we have to say about this entire thing is like it's a screenshot is like literally the build up to freaking wano taking like this poor button this uh, yeah, poor yeah. single button this one to, button yep <laughs> to hold on to wano